fit. Yeah. It's pretty easy to whine. <laughs> it's pretty easy to complain. As a matter of fact, most people have become journeymen at whining and complaining. It's almost as though from the moment we were born, we have this genetic makeup, this genetically engineered predisposition to whine and complain. You know, when you were hungry, the first thing you did was You know, and when you pooped your diapers, the first thing you did was After going <laughs> Or when you were wet, you didn't like it. So, it's not surprising that when you become a Christian that you carry over some of that same baby-like qualities when you first become a baby Christian. Because that's kind of what happens until you begin to redirect your disposition into a position of receiving from God His wisdom as opposed to your wisdom. Because you see, you've been around for a while. Yes, no, maybe. And because you have, you've already taken in a lot of information and you've made that part of your disposition. Well, God wants to dispossess that disposition and put you in the right position with Him. He wants to connect with you and put you in the place where you were meant to be as opposed to where you are and where you're heading because your disposition is leading you in the wrong position of eternity. It's causing you to find yourself in a place where God never intended you to be. And that's why we have to check and recheck our position. Where are we in the Lord today? I know it's easy, as I said, to whine and complain. And, you know, I'm the first one to say, you know, Lord, I don't feel so good today. Matter of fact, I'm, I'm kind of groggy, man. I'm just like, you know, oh, rubbing my eyes. and I'm kind of like deep voice and feeling kind of hoarse, you know, or maybe it's just coarse and just not quite, you know, 100%. So I could, you know, say, oh, God, deliver me from this body of flesh that I'm in and help me to be 100% healthy for you and me. I mean, I could do that. Or I could say, Oh God, protect me from the onslaught of the world and his ways. and Keep me safe, you know, and deliver me from temptation and from evil this day. Well, you know, I, I could do that, you know. I mean, I could go, Oh God, in the name of Jesus, rebuke Satan. Or I could be foolish and say, I rebuke you. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that one. <laughs> well, you know, I could do those things. But you know, there might be a reason why I don't feel good. There might be a consequence of my own actions that cause me not to feel good today. You know, like going out dancing all night. <laughs> but my wife and I, you know, we enjoy going dancing. So we go and we enjoy it. We can't, I can't dance every dance. You know, I'm a avid dancer, and when I go dancing, people say, oh, it's the dancer, let's watch him. You know, and they, they enjoy it, you know, and they have fun, because it's just fun dancing. It's not serious dancing, it's not break dancing, it's not hip-hop, although I could, you know... You know, do whatever. Or we could do, you know, the heart thing. Or... But my point is, I enjoy dancing, and my wife enjoys dancing. So, you know, it's a chance for us to go out dancing. We have fun, and people laugh at us because we're just a couple of old folks, you know. And my wife just kind of, you know, does a little bit of dancing. <laughs> Not much, because <laughs> she's like, who's that guy? <laughs> and me, I've always loved dancing. I just enjoyed it. I've danced in you know, Christian productions. And, I mean, I'm not a professional dancer. I just dance freestyle, you know, kind of rock and roll freestyle, you know, kind of. 
or hip hop <laughs> or whatever, <laughs> whatever my body will keep up with. So I could, you know, sit here and tell you, oh, woe is me, wretched man that I am, I'm suffering so. Or I could just own it, you know, and say, you know, truth is, my body's tired. I'm getting old, you know. If I'm going to do this, I got to exercise, you know, and prepare it for these kind of things. Or just be factual about the actual reasons why I don't feel like I should or could. Now, for me, because I own it and I'm telling you about it, I don't find myself at odds with sitting here and going, I don't feel good. You know, I can be honest with you and say, I don't feel good because I was stupid or I don't feel good because I overdid it, or I don't feel good because I always overdo it. <laughs> and Saturday I always go, oh boy, am I struggling. <laughs> but the reality of what I do in my relationship with God is I own it. I own my relationship with God. I don't try to hide from Him anything I have done and then put a spiritual cast on it by saying, oh, let's cover it you know, with all this glaze of, you know, religiosity. Because, you see, that's what a glaze is. It's a sugar coating. It's kind of like making a caramel topping, you know, on an apple. You know, the apple's like, you know, it's a good thing. But, boy, you dip that, that apple in caramel and, boom. Man, that's good stuff. <laughs> sugar rush. But glazing over the reality of who we are doesn't change the nature of the apple. The apple's still the apple. It may have tasted good while you ate it, but it was still an apple. And the benefits of that apple will still reap upon you that with which its nature is. The same thing is true about us. If we don't have a nature inside the Spirit of God, then the consequences of our sinful nature will catch up with us and we may be tripped up by some of our liberties that we have, our freedoms that God has given us to enjoy life or to employ grace in some place that maybe someone else can't go or cannot enjoy. Like some people, you know, I mean, I know there was times where they'd say, dancing of the devil, you know, <laughs> okay. Boy, no wonder he's having a fun time before he dies and goes to eternity. But. The reality of grace is extended to us so that we find ourselves in His way, realization of a perspective that God delivers us from ourselves sometimes. And He changes our nature so that we no longer desire to do those things that are not pleasing in His sight. God, for me, loves me dancing. We enjoy it together. It's like, oh, Lord, that's so much fun. Oh, you know, did you see that? Wasn't that cool? Uh, hey, God. Lord, holy, whoo, you know. Hora. No, not that kind, but the, you know, dancing. But the point is, God is not objectional to some of the things that we do that are directional. The direction of my choice may be in an area other people may have issues with to dance or not dance, but God's not objectionable to me dancing because of the way that I celebrate my life and that I take all of it directionally back to Him. I enjoy my perspective of God being in me and being the Christian who dances, the Christian who celebrates, the Christian who rejoices, the Christian who can, you know, hip hop and bebop and, you know, do up and whatever it may be. That I don't have a problem with that, though. Maybe somebody does, and I'm sure they do, but that's a problem that they can pray about and take care of their directional so that their objectionable questions might be relational back to their questioning God and asking Him what they should do as opposed to what I should do. Because you see, what God has given me to share with you is those things that we should own up to who we are, what we are, how we are, the way we are. Because if you don't operate in truth to begin with, you're going to follow a lie. And that lie will deceive you into believing in things that God never said. 
doing things that God never allowed. Finding yourself in bondage to things that God never intended you to be in bondage to. You can find great freedom and joy in knowing Jesus if you'll allow Him to take care of all the relational issues in your life by redirecting them from the objectionable things in your life to redirect them backwards to God. For instance, not feeling good is objectionable to me today. I don't like not feeling good. So I'm going to go take a hot bath. But beyond that, I can also turn it back to God and say, you know what, I know. I know. And, you know, maybe that was an extra dance or two. And, you know, maybe the weather got to my bones, you know, or maybe there's more to this that's going on than I know of. But God, thank you for giving me the direction of this day that causes me to get in reflection of understanding what's going on in my life so that if there are things I need to change you can speak to me and I can listen you can direct me and I can hear you could whisper in my ear and I can know the way that I should go because that's really how God uses and wants to lead us in our soul and in our spirit so that though we drag along this fleshy body that we inhabit we won't be caught up by its desires and its failings and its sin which so easily besets us. Rest in me. Seek this evening time just to be with me and the morning time and the noon time and the day time. Do not feel you have failed if sometimes I ask you only to rest together with me in my presence. Just be with me. I am with you much with you always as I have promised I would be. Not only in these times that you go through where you are less than a hundred percent but in all times feel the consciousness of my presence earth has no greater joy than that but to know me and the satisfaction there comes in knowing your God I am the heart's great interpreter even souls who are nearest together have much in their natures that remain a sealed book to each other and only as I enter and control their lives do I reveal to each the mysteries of the other. So as you come closer to me, I reveal myself to you. Each soul is so different. Each soul is unique. Each moment of life has caused that soul to grow and thereby be developed. I alone understand the perfectly of the language of each soul individually and can interpret between the two. So what is good for one is not good for all, and what is good for all is not good for one. Except that I direct, I inspect, I am the one who is your Lord and your God. You know, as I think about that, how personally real God is to take a written word, like the Bible, and not make it a dogma or a doctrine, though there are dogmas and doctrines in it, to not make it a legalistic documentation of a covenantal agreement that we have to live up to, although those things are in there. But God can take it as a word spoken from his lips and make it real and alive to ourselves in our hearing, in our seeing, in our day-to-day -day existence. Man, that's the ultimate sci-fi trip. I can't help but think that relationally, if we would always yield ourselves to that gentleness of the Holy Spirit of God, the Spirit of God as He lives inside us, guiding us back to Jesus, then we find the reality of knowing God in a personal, intimate way so real that every day we have Him with us, whether in sin or not, as David said, for should I make my bed in hell? or in the heavens, should I find myself in or out of sin, thou art there. And I think that's what makes God so intimate, personal, and real when we own up to ourselves, when we own our sin, when we own our successes, when we own who we are, and we stand naked before God and can say, thank you, God, for loving me. Isn't that really what all you wanted all along in your life, was just someone who would love you just the way you are
even though you're changing and you are being changed whether you know it or not but then you always just want someone to love you instead of you loving someone like a dog or a cat or a person or a husband or a child or a job or some other thing like a Harley <laughs> I pick on Harleys all the time. God knows why they people buy them. Who knows? God help you if you have a Harley. <laughs> Just status symbol, okay? You know, or whatever it may be. But isn't the reality of God loving you more than all these things?